I was uh, Lyon, Bayern Munich, seeing on Wednesday the Champions League match. It was an amazing match. It was so for, full of quality, speed, athletics, uh, tactical, uh, technical skills. It's, I mean, if you've been through these 50 years of women football and, and you see this, this is like a present. This is, this is a gift. And, and to see this on the field, that gives me such a pleasure, such a, a wonderful feeling how it was worth it every single fight or every single discussion in this world to do that. And to see that in, in your eyes, you know, uh, is, 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 it's, it's a miracle. I'm Monica Stab. Uh, my current title is the National Coach Women of Saudi Arabia. I played football in the street with all the boys and I was four years old. I was not allowed to play in a club because at that time women football was forbidden and this was in Germany. And um, 1970 actually, in 30 October, the German Football Federation gave us the allowance to play football. And I was just 11. And when I was 18, I decided to go abroad because the football always uh, followed me because I played then in England for Queen's Park Rangers, FC, Southampton and also then in Paris I was playing Saint-Germain at that time, this was in the 80s. And um, I came back in 83 here to Frankfurt and uh, I was establishing an, a club uh, at that time, SG Braunheim. I was a player, I was a coach. In 2006 I felt uh, the development in Germany was not completed, but it was very successful. So I was looking for some new challenges and a friend of mine, she had a call from FIFA and uh, she said, well, uh, they were looking for someone who can do a national team in Bahrain. So I didn't know where was Bahrain. So I arrived in Bahrain and I built up the national team, which was something exactly what I was looking for, because it was exactly that what I had in the past fighting in Germany or, you know, getting women football developed. Now I started the same procedure, the same uh, idea of doing this in Bahrain. I always called myself a pioneer in women football because that is, I think, the right, uh, uh, probably, description from my part, what I've been doing since 2007, going around the world in over 85 countries and, of course, trying to get these women football developed in some places where it's really difficult, it's not so easy. I did a national team in Pakistan. I was in Qatar, building up a national team there. I was in so many places, of course, over the world and, and helping all these women. And I think that was always my mission and my intention to help these girls, these women to play the game and having the same fun than the boys and the men have. And that what I was, yeah, been fighting for the last 14 years. And if you go to Africa and you give the girls a ball and they are so happy, you let them play. And when you give this to these girls for one moment, they feel happiness. They feel very much uh, self-confident. Uh, they feel they're part of the society. And I was in many of the refugees camps in Turkey from Syria. I was in Syria before the war. And all the boys are there, they want to play. And I says, no, I'm not here for you boys. No, 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 no. I want the girls, I want the women. And of course the women are shy and standing in the corner and, and they don't have the confidence. And I, you will not believe it, how their life is changed, how their life will be for a moment happiness through the football. They just so happy and forget everything. So that makes my life happy. Because of this, because of these people who give you something back, a smile, a thank, appreciation, and, and you feel you still have a lot to do in this world. I 
Saudi Arabia is really interesting because I was uh, living in Bahrain, building up that national team in 2007. And uh, there was this bridge going over to Saudi Arabia, to Dammam. And I always said, oh, I'm not allowed to go as a woman because they didn't have women football. So from 2011, football federation in the world, uh, Saudi was the only one who not officially allowed the women to play. And I thought, why is this? And that made me always yeah, a little bit uh, furious, a little bit frustrated why these women cannot play. Last year, of course, Corona, I was stepping out from my long-term project in Gambia. I had to come back because everything was shut down. So when I was at home, I got this call, 966, I didn't know, and sometimes it's strange to get some numbers. So I answered that call, 966, and um, it was the federation from the Saudi football. And uh, they asked me to do a sea license coaching course. And I thought, yes, I do it, of course, I will come. When? Yeah, next month, okay. And I met these two women coming at six o'clock in the morning and, and being ready to become a coach. And they did this for two weeks. I said, I don't believe that. And they were so committed, so dedicated, so full of passion. And these two women also convinced me then to come here to work with them as a national coach, as a developer. I'm doing academies. We have built now the first academy under 13, under 15, under 17. Um, we had 700 national players registered who want to become a national player. So this job is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's an honor. It's, it's something, I think, maybe the end of my career. I'm not sure how long I will do that job. And, and I feel I'm in the right place, in the right spot. I can get all my experience over these 58 years of football. I can give all of them to give all these girls this happiness, you know, play their game. And you will not believe it how I've been celebrated in Saudi Arabia. I feel sometimes like a pop star. Sometimes women are, oh, can we do it? Are we good enough? Yes, we are. We are good enough. We have to believe in it. We have to believe in ourselves, in our commitment, in our dedication. As long as I'm alive, I want to learn every day. And, and I think that is also my recipe. I feel when I'm in the country, I can learn from their mentality. I can learn from their ideas, which are different, of course, from the culture, from the uh, attitude, from the bringing up in Germany is a different bringing up in, in Saudi Arabia or uh, in Pakistan or Bhutan or wherever I have been. Uh, but it's to understand through the football. Of course, sometimes you, when you think back, life is going too fast no? to enjoy every minute you have. And, and I think I do every minute I have with the football, with my uh, greatest ally I have every day. And that is a great, this is just fantastic for your life.